Good day, everyone. We're coming on the air with breaking news in the United Kingdom, where King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer. Buckingham Palace just confirming the news in a statement, but not saying which type of cancer. The palace says his medical team identified, quote, a separate issue of concern while he was being treated for a benign prostate enlargement last month. The palace also says he will postpone public-facing duties while he undergoes treatment. It comes less than a year since his coronation. Let's go straight to our chief international correspondent, Keir Simmons, now. He's covered the royal family for years. What more can you tell us, Keir? Well, Lester, this will be a shock to many people because uh, Prince, uh, King Charles was was in the hospital just last week uh, and uh, the understanding was that it was a treatment uh, for a benign condition, a benign prostate condition. So I'm going to read to you, Lester, some of that statement uh, that Buckingham Palace is, is releasing uh, right now uh, so people can hear what exactly the palace is saying. That statement reads, during the king's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent <coughs> diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he, will, he has been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties, as you mentioned, Lester. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The statement goes on to say that the King is grateful to his uh, medical team and then uh, repeats again what had been said uh, last week was that he was hoping that uh, others would uh, learn from his experience and ensure, for example, that they get checked. Well, now I, I, I can imagine that he feels even more so uh, that way because uh, that three day, three nights in the hospital uh, last week uh, uh, seemed to be, uh, to some extent, the end of the matter. We were told that he uh, would take a, a month uh, to uh, slow down a little and, and to recover a little bit. But just yesterday, we saw him at church with uh, Queen Camilla uh, waving to the crowd. So uh, there didn't seem to be anything wrong. And again, as you mentioned, Lester, we, we don't know uh, what uh, type of, what form of cancer uh, this is. So it, it's difficult to speculate beyond beyond what we've been told by the palace, uh, but it will be a blow for the royal family. As you, as you mentioned, uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, dying uh, so recently and, and King Charles becoming a king just in the, the past year. Uh, this, after, for the royal family, after a period, let's be honest, of, of very difficult times, uh, this will be another challenge. All right, Kier, let me ask you to stand by. <clears throat> Excuse me, as we bring in NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Dr. Azar, we're glad you're here. I don't expect you to uh, make a diagnosis based on a, a, a press release, but uh, given what he had been treated for, this benign uh, prostate condition, are there any clues that, that might tell you where, where this might be? Well, sure. You know, Lester, we've, we've, as you know, we've received information really uh, by news release only. Um, the presumption is that he had a very standard procedure for prostate enlargement. Um, a common procedure is something called a TERP, a uh, transurethral uh, resection of the prostate, and it is commonplace and standard of care to look at the tissue under a microscope, even if a, if a, a tissue enlargement is considered to be benign, they're always going to study it under a microscope and look at the pathology to make sure that, in fact, there is no detectable cancer in those specimens. Um, my assumption is that it could very well be uh, presumably an early stage prostate cancer. Um, but in the procedure, as they're in the entire genitourinary system, if there was any tissue that looked abnormal when they were going in, bladder, urethra, that kind of thing, they may have taken a sample from another site, Lester, and the cancer could be from another organ, not the prostate. We just don't know at this time. And, and in terms of uh, uh, treatments, obviously, again, not knowing what kind of cancer we're talking about, I know you're limited as to what you can speculate, mm -hmm. about, speculate about, but if it is prostate cancer, what sort of treatments are there? 
Yeah, so, um, you know, presumably, um, in this case, as they did not obviously, um, you know, suspect a cancer going into the procedure, we're going to presume that it would be an early stage prostate cancer. Uh, in some cases, just observation could be appropriate. In other cases, uh, a radical prostatectomy or removal of the prostate could be indicated and also different forms of, of radiation. Uh, it's unlikely that that if it is a prostate cancer, that it has extended um, beyond the organ, beyond the capsule of the prostate at this juncture, uh, which would be, of course, a more concerning diagnosis and prognosis and, and would indicate that he would need more aggressive treatment, which would include chemotherapy. All right, uh, doctor, thank you. We'll ask you to stand by it again. We're, 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 we don't know what kind of cancer uh, he has been diagnosed with. Uh, let's bring in Emily Nash. She's the royal editor for Hello Magazine. We're appreciative of you being here. Uh, can you tell us, uh, is, has this been a story that has been out there, that there's been speculation, or is this a complete surprise to everyone? No, Lester, this has come as quite a surprise this evening in London. We saw the king out with the queen at church in Sandringham only yesterday, looking like he was in very good shape despite his recent procedure. Um, and one thing that I have learned in this very brief period of, of time since the news developed is that he has not been diagnosed with prostate cancer, that a separate issue of concern has been identified. And at the moment, the palace aren't sharing any further details on what kind of cancer they have discovered. Um, but And understandably, they're asking people not to speculate, but they want to make it clear that, you know, this was a benign uh, condition that he was being treated for and something else has come up as a result of that procedure. And, and we heard in that press release that he'll be postponing public facing duties. How busy is he typically in terms of these public duties? Well, look, the king works um, furiously. I think that's the, the way to describe it. He typically doesn't stop for lunch. He is at his desk until sometimes the early hours of the morning, keeping up with his correspondence. And since becoming king, he's taken on the daily red boxes, which the late queen also uh, worked on every day. It's going to be uh, quite the setback for him. We know he's um, an incredibly busy person, very dedicated to his causes and to his new role, um, which is one that he's been enjoying, you know. So this will be very difficult for him and for the wider royal family who are also dealing with the Princess of Wales being out of action until at least Easter time. Do you think it was uh, uh, difficult for His Majesty to go public with his diagnosis? Well, look, I think it will have been difficult and also uh, it will have been a shock to him as well. You know, he had given us this diagnosis of benign prostate enlargement. Um, it's something that uh, had been very transparent uh, from the palace. They had shared more than they have done previously, and that was designed to reassure. Uh, so this news is obviously hugely concerning to, to all involved and to the wider public. Um, but I think, you know, he is keen to... Uh, be as open as, as he can be at this moment. Obviously, he's only just received this diagnosis, is, is our understanding. So he probably needs some time to come to terms with that himself and to work out what the treatment plan will involve. All right, uh, Emily, I ask you to stand by. I want to bring back our chief international correspondent, Keir Simmons, as again, uh, he's covered uh, the royal family for years. I'd like you, Keir, if you can pick up on that theme of, of the, 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 the palace being so upfront about something so personal. Is that different than, than what we've come to expect? Sometimes it, it is. I mean, certainly they were very guarded, if you'll remember, Lester, about uh, the Queen's health uh, in the period before her death. Uh, in this case, they have been uh, very open, uh, frankly, uh, given that it is Buckingham Palace, uh, Lester. And, and really, uh, for the palace, there is this incredibly difficult judgment to make. Uh, the division between public duties and the fact that even a king um, has a right to privacy now, it's possible, and, and again, uh, as you have said, we, we have to be careful not to speculate because we honestly don't know what this cancer is. 
And by the way, there may be good news here. It may be that um, it, in the treatment uh, for uh, an enlarged prostate, they have found something in the early stages, and, and, and that may be a really positive thing. Uh, but I think the calculation would have been made in Buckingham Palace that if he is going to need, as they are saying, that, that he's going to need uh, treatment, uh, and that that does mean that he's going to have to step back from... Uh, public duties, although they are uh, saying very clearly that in private he will continue to carry out his duties as king. There's, there's all kinds of parts of his role that are, are constitutional for the British, British establishment, the British government. Uh, so because that, that was the case, inevitably there would be questions begun to be asked. There would be, uh, people would be looking to see, to look for him and, and possibly even take photographs and, and all of those things would be a risk. So I think on the one hand, they have chosen to be very open here. On the other hand, and Lester, I, I suspect they feel, felt that they had to be. All right. Uh, thank you, Keir Simmons. That concludes this NBC News special report. We'll have much more ahead on our streaming net network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com, and tonight on NBC Nightly News. I'm Lester Holt in New York. Thank you for watching, everyone. Good day. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.